today. We want to see a blade that's born of pure imagination. So in the first round of competition, we'd like you to use your imagination to forge for us a fantasy blade that is between 12 and 14 inches in length. Since you're making out of this world blades, here's some out of this world metal to deal with. That is meteorite. Gentlemen, you must combine this meteorite that is entirely mild steel with 1095 powder to create a canister Damascus billet from which to forge your blades. Fancy blade, okay. Canister, not ideal. Meteorite, I have no clue. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your 10 minute design window starts now. Fantasies are hard because I don't watch fantasy TV or nothing like that, but I'm trying to put a fish design, a fish tail on my drawing and uh, have a swell in the middle. You know, this could be my fantasy, a fish mouth. I don't make fantasy blades, but I came up Forge and Fire to win. So I'm going extreme. I'm designing something that I can see an alien carrying in however many years. I was thinking this curved blade with a handle on the back. It is way outside of the box. They said fantasy. I made them fantasy. Oh my god, I love fantasy blades. I make those all the time, so it should be easy, right? I started out making this blade as a Viking blade, so I'm going for a space Viking theme. So my blade was designed to kill three-headed, tentacled, purple aliens from Scotland. It's my realm. I can do what I want. Your three-hour forge time starts now. Canisters, it is one of my secrets that I just don't know how to do them. But the only way is to jump in there and do it. I put white out in my canister to start with. Purpose of the white out is to try to get the 1095 not to stick so you can cut it off pretty easy. And I know it's a soft metal, so I don't want the meteor close to the edge. The time limit is not a factor right now as long as I get my weld to work. People waste a ton of time liquid papering, waiting for it to dry, and then trying to remove that can. And a lot of times they stick anyway. So I'm not taking the canister off. I'm just going to forge that soft steel right in there and grind it off at the end so I have a hardenable edge. I know 1095 is hardenable, so I'm putting the meteor in the middle. I need hardenable steel on the edge of my knife because if it's not hardenable, it will stay soft, and in the testing, it will get damaged. To make my canister, I'm gonna use pieces of meteorite, and I'm gonna put them in the bottom and try and get them to be the spine of the knife. And then I'm gonna put in the 1095 powder. I'm doing it this way so that I know that my mild steel will be in one part of the billet, and it'll be high carbon in the rest. I get my can packed up, welded, and into the forge it goes. It's time to start drawing this thing out. Chris is looking good. Now, he has to yeah. draw a billet out that's a lot longer for his design with that big curve and that drop edge. To get this blade at 14 inches, I have to make my billet 26 inches long. That is a long billet. Sword with that. This thing's going to be wild. The usability, I think, is going to be a question in everybody's minds here. We get to be part of the fantasy. We get to make up how to use the thing. In the canister off at the moment is my biggest concern. I think that what he's done is he's drawn out that billet, so peeling this is going to be a challenge. There you go. I realized that I have no idea where my meteorite is. I don't remember which side I put the high carbon on. If that meteorite's on the edge, then the blade won't harden. Without a hardened edge, it won't cut, it won't slice, it'll be useless. When you etch your blade, the acid is just eating away at the weaker steel, so the meteorite's gonna be lighter than the 1095. Hopefully it's on the spine and not on the edge. Now we can see where everything is. The nice thing about having that meteorite with that much nickel in it, it should pop pretty, pretty brightly. Uh-oh. That's a shame. So he's got mild steel on his edge and some high carbon steel. My blade is meteorite 1095, and they both meet at the edge. It's a big deal because if both edges aren't hard, the blade will deform, it'll break. There's really no way for me to fix it. I just hope it doesn't break. <laughs> that weird tang tail is what's getting great. me. <laughs> oh, my God. It's an alien story. I want to quench just the edge, but the quench tank won't allow that, so I'm going to have to quench the whole blade. 
I want that blade to be hard. I want that blade to be straight. It's not hard. Start to freak out a little bit. Then I think that canister is still on that blade. Of course it's not hard. So that was an aha moment. All right, look at that. Randy's getting ready to quench. Perfect. All right. And there we go. Yeah. I've got a good, hard, straight blade, and I'm tickled. It's impossible to state how much that clock will mess with your head. Dan, he's got his shape ground in. Because my blade is meteorite 1095, when it gets quenched, the 1095 constricts, so the blade gets a bow in it. Stupid blade. So the goal is to have as little warp as possible. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I'm going to quench this blade as many times as I have to until it comes into a range where I know I can fix it. Holy crap. Big wow. fireball. Five, four, three, two, one. This first round of competition is over. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test to test the strength and durability of your blades as well as the overall construction of your fantasy knives. I will be chopping them into this odd looking armor. Remember, this test is all about what the armor does to your blades and not what your blades do to the armor. Dan, you're up first. You ready? Yep. All right. Oh, God, this is the worst feeling ever. My stomach just went up to my throat. Half my edge is high carbon steel, and the other half is meteorite. It looks good, but I don't think it's going to hold up. Well, Dan, first things first, your knife held together. Everything's still tight. There's no wiggling. The edge, however, there's three major sections of deformation. You can see the steel is sticking up pretty high here. It's kind of curled around. That all being said, I think you did a, a really interesting fantasy-looking blade. And this part up here where it becomes big and proud, it really penetrated the armor really well right there. It's interesting looking and functional at the same time, so well done. Thank you. Randy, you're up. How you feeling? Not really ready. Yeah, we're going to do it anyway. I'm a little worried. Dan's blade took a lot of damage, and I feel like I may be right there with him. Uh, I want to close my eyes, and I just don't want to look. Well, Randy, this is a, it's got a lot of mass to this thing. This is a heavy knife. Your blade held up really well. There's some minor chipping here and here, but the edge geometry you put on that is perfect for a chopping test like this. The handle is comfortable to hold, but it is a little bit easy to lose control. That aside, I like that you used the meteorite for the guard. I think it, it really adds to the, uh, the fantasy nature of the knife. So. And all, well done. Thank you. Chris, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm excited to swing this thing. My knees are shaking. My palms are sweating. My heart is thumping. What I'm worried about is my design. I've never seen one like my blade. Well, Chris, this is why I wear a glove. I'm kind of stuck in there. For the first couple of strikes, it was fun to swing. I'll give you that, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, it is bent up this way here, but more importantly, right down here where the blade meets the handle is where it pulled away from the guard at that spot. I'm guessing your tang right there is just wasn't wide enough to support this amount of stress, and the whole handle moved over. And I just don't feel comfortable testing this weapon anymore. I understand. All right, Chris, of all of our Smiths in this competition, you embrace this challenge the most wholeheartedly. But unfortunately, it presents a clear and present danger to the end user. And for that reason, we cannot continue testing your blade, and I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I went all out with my design. I embraced that challenge. My son and I have a very competitive bladesmithing relationship. We compete all the time. So, he wants to come to Ford and Fire when he turns 18. 
I set a pretty big bar for him to meet, but I'm excited for him to get this experience. First thing I do when I get home is I'm gonna hug my wife and kiss my dog. But I don't have a dog or a wife. 